Welcome to Electra Online. In this video, we're going to find an expression for the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x. If we let y equal the function, the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x, and we're trying to determine what that's equal to, we could then say that x must then be equal to the hyperbolic cosine of y. So we go from the inverse function to the regular function by simply reversing the variables. And since the hyperbolic cosine of y is defined, at, defined by e to the y plus e to the minus y divided by 2, we can then set x equal to the expression. And now all we have to do is reverse. Uh, we want to solve this equation for y, so really reverse the, the order of events. So we want to solve for y because we know y is equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x. So the first thing we want to do is multiply both sides by 2. End up with 2x equal e to the y plus e to the negative y. And then we're going to use that trick again. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the y. The reason why we do that is when we multiply these two together, of course, then we simply get 1, and that simplifies the equation. So on the left side, we get 2x times e to the y equals on the right side, multiply these two together, we get e to the 2y and then plus 1. And now we realize, if we look closely, that we actually have a quadratic equation of e to the y. So we're going to rewrite this, move this to the left side, we end up with 0 equals e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y plus 1. And sure enough, there's our quadratic equation of e to the 2y. And so now we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve that. So we can say here that e to the y is equal to the negative coefficient of the middle term that becomes a positive 2x plus or minus the square root of the middle term squared, which is negative 2x quantity squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is also 1. And the whole thing divided by 2 times a would be 2 times 1. Again, these are the coefficients of the first, the second, and the third term. Now, working this out, we get the following. So e to the y now becomes equal to 2x plus or minus the square root of, this becomes 4x squared minus 4 all divided by 2. We can factor out a 4. e to the y equals 2x plus or minus Oh, no, when we factor out a 4 out of the square root, we get 2 times the square root of x squared minus 1 divided by 2. And now we can divide the 2 into the numerator, and we get e to the y is equal to x plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1. Now when we take the natural log of both sides, we get the natural log of e to the y is equal to the natural log of x plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1. Now here, let's take a look and see why we need plus or minus, or why we only need one of those two possible solutions. First of all, we know that when it comes to the hyperbolic cosine, that x must be greater than or equal to 1. Secondly, if we allow the negative, and you let x become a large number, the minus 1 becomes insignificant, and then basically you have x minus x, which goes to 0. So for large values of x, if we allow the negative sign, e to the y would go to 0, which really doesn't make any sense, because we expect to see an exponential function. So therefore, the negative is not a possible answer. And so finally, we now take the natural log of both sides, so we end up with y is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. We don't need, oop, not plus 1, but negative 1, negative 1. And we don't need absolute value signs because we know x is going to be greater than or equal to 1. So there we go. Since y is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1, and y is also equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosine, we can then conclude, therefore, that the hyperbolic cosine of x must therefore equal what we have here, which is the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And there you have it. That is how we now calculate the inverse hyperbolic cosine. And 
if we can then find an integral that equals the negative or that equals the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x, then simply the integral can then be evaluated by evaluating that quantity right there, that expression. And so therefore, again, they're useful, and that's how it's done.